with the smile of their golden king wiped away for good, and the ground war nearly upon us, the citizens here are losing faith. Through special intelligence, we confirmed the existence of the enemy ace pilot, Garuda One. It seems he has fallen into some kind of predicament within his own ranks. His fiercest rival, Lieutenant Commander Pasternak, is naturally worried about the possibility of Garuda One losing his position. After lecturing Pasternak to hold on to his baggage, I feel like a damned hypocrite. Undergarments and trousers can be replaced, but I cannot afford to lose the contents of that briefcase. Three children have turned this rotting underground passage into a hideout. I guess that explains how they eluded security forces during the sweep. I've already seen the notification. Today, in this very area, the initial demolition for the Grace Maria fortification construction is to be carried out. The tremors have triggered an ancient trap door, unused for some 600 years. And now, we have lost our way out of here. <sighs> Garuda team, I've got some good news. The chemical agent used as a catalyst for their WMD is being transported to our shores from the Estevakian mainland. This catalyst has already been carried into the outskirts of Grace Mary. As a measure of caution against any attempts to destroy it, it has been concealed at Fort Norton in Grace Maria's north. If we start advancing again, the enemy will most likely bring the catalyst into Grace Maria at a faster pace. If, in fact, weapons of mass destruction are used on the population of Grace Maria, the resulting devastation can't be expressed in enough words. It will lead to unspeakable tragedies. We've used this intelligence to come up with a solid proposal on how to prevent this scorched earth policy from being executed in our capital. Just a minute ago, we received a letter of approval for our prevention plans from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The proposal we put on the table for our scorched earth prevention policy is really quite simple. While the enemy transport unit is stationed at Fort Norton, we'll ambush them. We'd like to call it our tactic for preemptive victory. The enemy has loaded this catalyst into their transport vehicles and is able to send them into Grace Maria at any time. This plan will be carried out by a handful of our top pilots under absolute secrecy fly through Fort Norton's canyon at an extremely low altitude to avoid radar detection and take out those transport vehicles. We've determined that a high-risk mission of this magnitude could not be executed by anyone other than Garuda team. We're counting on a flawless execution here. Yeah, no, there was no way in hell that literally three missions out from the end of the game, it would just suddenly stop and say, yeah, no, you can't play this game or fly anymore. No, no, it's of course not. And you need the, the canyon mission. It's a requirement. Yeah, it, it's an ace combat game. It needs a canyon mission. So let's see, what plane are we going to pick for this one? Uh, one of the ones that we haven't seen yet. Ah, let's go with the Tomcat. This is good. This sounds good. Game director's favorite plane, you know. Really? It's Kono's favorite plane? Uh, yeah. In one of the Ace Combat 7 preview videos, I believe he mentioned that. That he picked the Hornet and he said, it was really hard for me not to pick the Tomcat. <laughs> well, 
he should have given it better stats then, because like in every game it appears in, this thing handles like a fully loaded shopping cart. From what I hear, that's not entirely unrealistic. Mm. I mean, Top Gun notwithstanding. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, just picking anti-air weapons for an air-to-ground mission, nothing to see here. I feel like I should start with two things. One, hi, I'm Scion. Um, I didn't actually say that before. <laughs> two, this whole thing where they're like, oh, suddenly you're in trouble, it makes no sense. Kinda, like, uh... uh fuck off, Shamrock. Agreed. Just as bad, Ghost Eye. I can't believe he has the nerve to be this self-righteous. There's this thing called a hierarchy, like a, you know, command, chain of command. You might have heard of that, Shamrock, maybe? Mm, yeah, like, especially because, like, as I was going to say, like, we ended the mission last time around with Shamrock, like, basically very vocally disobeying orders. So it's like, yeah, no, like, I can see why they would be reprimanded for it. Also, yeah, we got to little brief blip there of uh, McKnight and Donnie basically uh, showing up here in the mission for some reason. Don't let them know we're here, so let's broadcast on a channel they can hear. Yeah. I love Strange Reel. Mm. It's like, yeah, they're just really the only reason that they show up in this mission, just, just to remind you that they exist. God. Looks like our guest is out of harm's way. Also, like, I, the first time I ever played, like, Ace Combat 6, like, I just recently watched The Big Lebowski for the first time. So, like, you got to, basically, McKnight, and then you got Donnie Torch, like, his, like, second-in-command, so, like, Are I was almost... suggesting he's out of his element, maybe? Kinda, well, either that or I was expecting, like, Donnie would say something, and then every now and then McKnight would just go, shut the fuck up, Donnie. Uh, that would have made this game a lot better, I think. <laughs> also, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, because I took the uh, the Tomcat out, so the, the thing is a big lumbering beast, so you're not going to see me really do any showboating in this mission because uh, in the scrapped run that I did of this, I took the uh, flanker out, and I was, yeah, just flying through the cross beams and all the bridges and stuff like that, just pulling off some, like, really, really showboaty moves because it is that maneuverable. Oh, yeah. Whereas, yeah, th this thing is a bathtub. I, I think the first time I played this, it's been a while, but I didn't know how low you had to be, so I spent a lot of time running into the ground at an altitude. You know, I was like, okay, I need to keep under, like, 200 feet or whatever. And no, <laughs> so much more forgiving than that. Yeah, it's, like, 2,000 feet, I think, because, like, I get up to, like, you'll see it in a little bit here, like, I get up to about 18, and it starts screaming, pull down. I think, like, either the one in Zero or the one in Ace Combat 2 are, like, the most unforgiving. Like, probably more, too more so because it has a really finicky level of when it triggers, like, the radar spike, and it also doesn't tell you what altitude it expects you to fly under. Which one has more cranes? Because that's the real natural enemy of any canyon run. Oh, God, well... The tunnel in, uh... Aces in 5 is really, really dickish for that. Oh, yeah. Also, uh... Assault Horizon Legacy's version of One Night Stand has a bunch of shit that they threw in there in the remake to make it a lot more difficult. I mean, I just need to point out Assault Horizon, not Legacy. It's canyon level, extremely good. Huh, well, again, like, Assault Horizon, like, like OG Assault Horizon is like the, the one game I still like am basically refusing to play. You're gonna do it. It's, it's mechanically significantly improved. The problem is all the bad stuff is at the very start, so everyone plays it and is like, what is this nonsense, and quits, and right before it gets good. Basically, yeah. Also, yeah, I... 
considered doing a bit of showboating there, then decided against it at the last possible second and damn near crashed because of it. So you showboated by accident? Yeah. Commence attacks once you confirm its location. Also, Bill, at least when you're not pulling off crazy maneuvers, the uh, the Tomcat is like crazy stable, so yeah, you can do strafing runs with that. Yeah, that was solid. Mm -hmm. One thing you didn't show off, because you were actually good at this run, is um, if you take too long on each one of those checkpoints, sometimes the enemy will start talking, like, oh, get the radio, and they come up with all these ridiculous fake excuses to give you extra time. Mm. What's the frequency, forgets the guy whose sole job is to know the frequency to contact headquarters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I think one of them plays by default, and then, yeah, like, if you take longer on the other ones, it, like, it starts playing, but... You get, like, a reduced amount of time for each one to take out all the enemies. Also, yeah, now, now it's time to just get the fuck out of here, so... Just gonna blow up all these ECM-producing radar facilities for no reason. Yeah, mission accomplished. This really required the top Marion pilots ever. Mmm. Well, considering how fond Project Aces is of doing, like, these, like little low-rent spin-off starring, like, the B-teams, I'm actually kind of surprised there was no spin-off, like, starring, like, Windhover or Avalanche or Sky Kid. I want a spin-off starring Snake Pit. Oh, God. Just fly in a circle in your flying bus. <laughs> I was so happy when the thread, you know, his the first mission with him showed up, and the thread immediately exploded with people saying Snake Pit's the best, and I'm just like, yes, yes, he is. Mm. Also, damn, that is... A disturbing amount of planes that are being spawned in for basically a get to the return line objective. You just really want you to leave. Yeah. Uh, you know Project Aces, they love to do these pre-scripted sequences. Also, yeah, always shoulder check when you're flying. Yeah, you certainly want to accidentally run into the ground. That, that hasn't happened lately, has it? Be <laughs> careful. Also, I don't know why that one missed. ESM is really powerful in this game, clearly. Mm -hmm. Also, like, I just love, like, the fucking swarm of typhoons and strike eagles that just goes zipping by when I make that turn. It's like the fucking Benny Hill theme should be playing right now. Oh, fuck. Oh, you'll be fine. Also, yeah. Just to slam you in the face with, yeah, they all turn into primary targets. And the return line's gone, too, so great. Well, that's not that many red dots, right? Uh, uh <laughs> well. <laughs> right? Oh, well, thank God I randomly picked the SAAM before the start of the mission. Yeah, imagine that. The missile that's basically immune to ECM. <laughs> oh, this thing was also real nasty in multiplayer. You could snipe people, and they just had no way to deal with it. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, the Tomcat's been, like, really, really good for that. Like, since at least Zero, I think. Yeah, I didn't play a ton of, of AC6 multiplayer, but when I did, I was either circling at long range, spamming um, XLAA6s or whatever with this, or uh, the SAMs with this. Mm. Uh, no, what what I do is I, I take out the yellow 13 skin on the flanker and, like, take, like, the QAAMs or whatever and, like, just get in really close to people and just take them out and, like, I could hear people screaming at me over like Xbox Live and like I didn't have a microphone because I don't like to engage with like other people because I'm like basically a misanthrope at heart so like it was basically just my way of just I don't know griefing people by proxy also yeah wait oh okay I, oh good I got the uh, the E767 I got I got two at once there no Estovaki and Snake Pit oh there's still one more of them out there I mean, also, as you're turning around here, I know that in the first video you mentioned the missile contrails. I really think this is the best showing they've had in the whole game so far. Mm. Garuda 
Alpha has taken damage. And the downside to the semi-active. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's like we got an all-star cast lined up for this performance. It's like this this moment is like 100% unearned, but just in and of itself, it is like a really, really great fuck yeah moment for the game. Well, I figure it's only unearned if you don't subscribe to the theory that Ghost Eye is trolling Shamrock. Because <laughs> you notice he went silent. You're sitting there fighting a huge, you know, number of enemy planes. He wasn't saying a word. Last mission, he wouldn't shut up about Shamrock being stupid. Oh, uh, like I've never considered that before. But yeah, that that just makes me like Ghost Eye even more. If that's true, <laughs> I, I, I thought about it and I was like, no, this is Ghost Eye trolling Shamrock. He's he's on the other channel talking to all the other squadrons. Like, hey guys, you won't believe what Shamrock's thinking right now. <laughs> I still owe you one. That's it. Let's get this over with quick. I was like, yeah, again, th this is another mission where, like, the allied cover and the allied attack really comes in handy because, like, all you gotta do is just, like, hold the up or down button and, like, literally half of the radar screen disappears. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous because you've got every allied support squadron and they fill up the bar so you can spam it. It's beautiful. Yeah, and plus you've also got Snake Pit there too, which is like giving you just like at least level one ESM right off the bat. So basically every shot you fire from this point forward is gonna hit something. Avalanche, I got that fighter off your tail. Looks like you still got a load. You did not. Oh, come on, Shamrock, stop being a dickhead. Talisman did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Snake Pit gets the slam chaos dunk. Just further cementing his status as the best. <laughs> All planes get back to base. Next up is Grace Maria. Yeah, Maria, fuck yeah. I just don't know if that song works for Canada. Mission accomplished. Uh, the WMD catalyst. Yeah, I know we don't really have any have badass rocking, to Grace Mary. you know, as a result, nationalistic, patriotic songs like that. And from this point on, we will be dispatched. Yeah, you have songs which blame you for things that aren't really your fault. But that's about yeah. it. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say it's basically because we're comfortable and confident in our identity as a nation. I mean, I can't disagree. That's probably true. <laughs> you just have no need for it. Hmm. I know. Yet I'm probably gonna get a bunch of people going like, "Oh, Canadian identity. Yeah, that's not a thing. Oh, our our identity is we're not American. Well, Canadian politics 101, motherfuckers." Don't worry, I can take the heat off you. It's really simple. Ace Combat 6 is mechanically a superior version of Ace Combat 4. Assault Horizon is actually a really good game. People who complain about the anime melodrama of Ace Combat 6 and then complain that Assault Horizon is boring are hypocrites. What other hot takes do I need to get you out of this one? Uh, say something about the Idol Masters real quick. Idol Master skins are objectively the best in the game. All right, done. Man, if that doesn't get people in the thread to say something other than angel text, I don't know what will. Oh, uh, I should just shut that down now. <laughs> like, oh my god. Also, yeah, look at all of these arrows now. Power of the Xbox 360 in arrows. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I cannot wait to see what the PS4 is going to do for Ace Combat 7. Uh, from what I've seen, it's going to do amazing things. <laughs> And I'm interested to see what they're going to do with the uh, the PS4 Pro, like the upgraded version. See what they're going to push. Mm. Also, yeah, here here comes all the allies in now. Yeah, and then all the red arrows just disappear. They're just mm. gone. <laughs> yeah, like you'll you'll see it in a second. Like after the mission accomplished, triggers how they just all form up on you immediately. Yeah, watch this. Okay, now everybody get in line. This game's AI is just absolutely incredible at times. Everyone hurry back to your 
Huddled together in this cramped room, there is no way out for any of us. One boy is called Radio, aptly named considering he never parts with his own. He's spouting off code words used by the American fighter pilots as he takes on the role of a jet himself. Hey, kid! This child's family owned and operated a well-known restaurant in the city. His father was a talented chef, and his mother a humble young waitress. They were both killed, their restaurant destroyed, all because of our aerial assaults. She proudly sings a song that was sung by her nation's pilots. I had this image in my mind of street children being a symbol of strife and despair brought on by the horrors of war. Now that I've had a closer look, I'm beginning to see something quite different. These children are lonely, but full of pride for their nation's pilots, always with them in spirit. Even with my crippled leg, I feel as though I could dance the night away with an angel. These children were hiding their treasure, their golden king, protecting it at all costs, keeping it safe from us, the invaders. As we walked the long road, Ludmilla and I came across an unusual tank. I seem to remember this man from somewhere. What is his tank doing out here, away from all the action? I thought the front lines were a bit more to the west. Why don't you ladies go on ahead? <clears throat> We've got to figure out some way to sneak this hunk of metal into town. All right then. Good luck. Bank job, boys. See ya. Best get out of here. Have a nice dance with the angels now. My family's inside joke has become quite the buzzword. Even the captain uses it to say goodbye. But it feels strange to hear others say it. We're almost there. And then I saw something horrible. Grace Maria, or what's left of it, was transformed into a heavily armed fortress. The Estovakian military intends to fight to the bitter end. She stares up at them, holding on to some sort of premonition. I opened the briefcase that the children kindly returned to me. This mandate has been sealed for so long, but the time has come to break that seal. <laughs> 